Uh, my name is uh, Marc Manta. Uh, I'm from Gatineau. Uh, I have three daughters, nine, seven, and four years old. Uh, and I live with them and my girlfriend in Gatineau. I uh, work for the Governor General's office. Uh, I've been working for the Government of Canada for the past 16 years now, I think, as a web developer. This hobby allows me to get lost in space, basically. Uh, I don't like flying. I wouldn't go on a shuttle, but I can look at my screen, be really close to it, and I feel like I'm in space. <laughs> so that, that's one thing I like about it, just kind of exploring the, the unknown. So, well, at least I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. Other people's do, but I can really make my own stories. And the other thing that, that I like is finding the shapes that look like something like the Orsa Nebula that really looks like a horse head, right? Yeah, a lot of the nebulae that we see, we, there's really common shapes and it's, it's fun to look at it and uh, like check what other people are seeing as well. And, and the other thing I find fascinating is uh, the pillars when you take a picture and you see the birthplace of stars, basically. Like that's where it all starts, right? That's the spark that makes it all happen. I've always been fascinated by the night sky ever since I was a kid, like a lot of people, right? And I remember when I was about maybe 12 years old, my cousin had a telescope and he brought it home and we looked at the moon for the first time and it was a really cheap thing, but it doesn't matter when you're like, even binoculars are really good to look at it, right? So, and, I, uh, so, and ever since then, I've, I've said to myself, I'm gonna get a telescope someday and then you become a teenager, you party too much, and you forget about the telescope, and then you become calmer, and you say, oh, maybe now would be the time to look at the night sky, right? In 2014, I think, yeah, around that, uh, my girlfriend bought me my first real big telescope. Uh, so, well, it was a, a Newtonian scope, a 600 um, millimeter, I think, of focal length. Uh, and it has a, a motor on it with go to so you can align it with a small procedure and you use the handset and then you can you don't need to know the sky at all it's just gonna point to the object and go in and see it I, I was really surprised at the amount of stars I could see just through looking through the eyepiece versus what I was looking even like in the light polluted city right uh, so um, I went and said, oh, I want to look at Andromeda Galaxy, our closest neighbor. And I looked at it and it was just a little fuzzy stuff. Like it was cool to see, but I wanted to see more. And, uh, so I was just browsing on the web one day and I actually saw a picture of Andromeda, a super nice picture. And I was wondering which like space agency had took, taken this picture. Uh, and I read in the comment, it was on Reddit, uh, and I realized that I'm on the astrophotography subreddit and just people are doing that from their backyards. I'm like, okay, I want to do that. So I started reading on it and see that, well, there's basically three or four types you could do uh, of astrophotography. So you can do wide field with a landscape and Milky Way. Uh, for that, you need just a, a, a DSLR, basically. Uh, and then you can do planetary, the moon, the planets, or even the sun. And then you can go deep sky. I started to look at what I had. I had this telescope. So I said, okay, I'm gonna buy a DSLR. I'm gonna be able to shoot stars in the night sky. And I'm gonna get an adapter to put it on the telescope. So I started playing around in the city. I realized that, yeah, the light pollution is really a big killer. Uh, so I said, okay, I'm gonna do planetary instead and try to put it on the telescope. So I get the adapter, put it on the telescope, cannot get it in focus. So read more, I don't have a telescope made for that. So I needed a special, another special adapter uh, just to be able to reach focus with it. And then from there, I was able to take pictures of Jupiter and Saturn with that telescope. And that's really where I got like, how do you say that, bit by the, the bug or something like that. So I really got hooked to it. So, and kept like really doing my, my research and okay, made a big like document of, okay, what are the telescope options that I need to do what I want to do. And so I ended up choosing uh, a refractor telescope uh, which are uh, basically the classic model of telescope that you usually see because they're 
low maintenance. You don't need to calibrate them or do anything. Uh, so I went with that uh, and I chose a, a short uh, a short one to stay wide field because when I was looking through uh, the um, sky map application Stellarium, uh, you can see the pictures of the deep sky objects and you can actually put the telescope that you have, you put the numbers, the lens and all that and you see the square of what it's going to look like. And I realized like there's a ton of objects that are huge, like really huge, but we just don't see it with our eyes, right? And that's kind of the beauty of astrophotography, right? Because if we would see it every night, it would just become an everyday thing and we wouldn't notice it, right? So uh, that's something that I really like, like revealing the hidden beauty of like the night sky. Uh, and it really makes you think and it makes you, it makes a little bit like your problems seem smaller when you see like all these dots or stars and can potentially add planets and life on them and all of that like and we're made, we're stardust, right? So we're I'm basically looking at what we're made out of. We're kind of part of the universe and, and more than we know, right? So um, uh, that's what I really enjoy about it, like exploring and just getting lost in that. There's also different type of astrophotographers. So me, I'm the lazy kind. So there's a lot of people who like to go on the f in the field, set up their stuff, be more manual and like do a manual focus. Uh, but here with the weather that we have, if you want to do it all year long, like the first uh, cold night that I was focusing, I almost lost like two fingers because it was so cold and you cannot really do it with gloves. So I said, okay, I, I need a solution for that. So I, I went and did some research and I, I decided to automate my rig as much as possible so that I can just let it do its thing when it's set up. And then I gathered the images, let it go all night and then just take the data and deal with it after that. And we're a small community. Well, not that small, but there's not a lot of people who do astrophotography, but I'm in my feedback loop of where my Instagram is all astrophotographers, right? So I keep looking at what others are doing and I keep like, oh, how did he do it? And so I read on, we usually put the details of what we captured, how we acquisitioned it and always try to um, uh, reach that level, basically. So you find a couple of astrophotographers that are like really good and you try to kind of take parts of their techniques to increase your images. So, and it's fun because you can keep all your old data and just after a year, look back at it and just redo it and say, oh, there's all of that that was hidden that I wasn't able to pick up before. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a really interesting hobby. I'm uh, taking pictures with a black and white camera. So that's the camera right here. Uh, the actual sensor is about at that level. The rest of it is a cooler uh, to make sure that the sensor is always at the same temperature to have like cleaner images. Uh, that is a filter wheel. So I have a red, blue, green uh, UVIR filter and narrow band for hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur, uh, depending on which type of photography I want to do. In this part here, you have a field flattener, which makes sure that the stars are all pinpoint and not uh, elongated. Uh, this is the finger saver, the <laughs> autofocuser, the, the electronic autofocuser. Uh, so basically I can control the focus from the PC uh, and my software has routine to that every 45 minutes it redoes the focus for me. So I'm lazy. Um, and this part here, the smaller telescope on top of it, uh, it's a guide scope. That's a little guide camera and with my software it picks a star in the sky and makes it makes sure that it's always tracking in the right place because the mount it's gears that's that, that make the movement and they have small errors right inside of it there's a little gap uh, and every once in a while the tracking gets off a little bit so this little guy uh, with the software makes sure that if there's an error it's going to use the PC and say no go back to that place instead so it's just going to send the correction so that I can do shots that are 10, 15 minutes instead of three minutes. Uh, so, and yeah, so that's uh, what it is. And that's my little PC here, little PC stick that I use to control everything. And I remote on it from the laptop inside. I 
ask myself thousands of questions, basically. Uh, so one thing that I, I'm always wondering is, is there somebody else in that picture? Is there somebody else that's doing the same thing as I'm doing? Like, is, is he taking a picture of Earth, basically, of like our surroundings? Like, that, that's something that really, like, blows my mind. Uh, and the other thing, it's how vast it is and... I mean, we're talking about like colonizing Mars and, and all, and it's all good, but it's... I'm, yeah, once the Earth is un, un, unhabitable because of mostly, most likely us, we're gonna go mess up on another planet, but in the end, it's the sun that's gonna destroy everything, right? So we might move to Mars, but we'll have to go somewhere else at some point because the sun won't allow us to live anymore. So uh, it just, if we're at that step, uh, eventually that's what we're gonna do, gonna go and expand and go outside of the solar system. So I'm, I'm wondering like how many races like us already just, explored way way more than we did or is it like the i think it's the free paradox where we're just all trapped it's just too far and even if there's another civilization that is as or more advanced than us they can never reach us and they're gonna die before they're gonna go instinct before they can reach us so it's it's kind of uh yeah it hurts my head to think about it too much <laughs> So the first thing I was really happy with the result that I did was uh, with my first setup was uh, Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, I found that super impressive just to be able to take a, a video with a, a standard camera and to see the, the amount of details that come out after that. You see the, the lines, like, like the rings of Jupiter, like, um, yeah, and, and Saturn, like it, it's amazing. So that really what I said, okay, yeah, I have some kind of talent in there, let's continue and go for it. And after that, there was the moon. And what's, so people are not always aware of that, but when you take a, you look at the final image of a, a deep sky object, you're actually looking at a ton of images that were taken and superposed, like stacked one on top of each other. Because every time you take a picture, there's noise in the image, right? Like those grainy dots. And by taking a bunch of them and stacking them, you kind of eliminate part of it and you increase the range of colors, the dynamic range of the object. And then you can go and with software and just make the colors boost and pop out, right? So one image could be like in total 12 hours. I, I've seen people do 50 hours on the target, right? So it's a, a lot of work. So there's a big part of um, getting out in the field, planning your thing, setting up and most of the time you're alone so it's it's a solitary uh, hobby you can go go with with friends too but i prefer to do it most of the time alone because there's less um, chances that there's going to be light going in the camera or messing up your shots right uh, so uh, yeah so i just go with it and get get lost in that hobby and it's never ending that so when I find something, like the first thing is, yes, I got it. <laughs> uh, but it depends on the technique I've used to, to do it. Uh, it's way more satisfying when I'm not using a computer and automated gear, but it's way longer. And the part until I find it, I find it frustrating. So I'd rather use my, my PC and tell it, like, go to that target and it's gonna go. So, because that's one of the reasons also I went automated is I, I don't know the sky that much. Like I know it, but to try to find a target with a 200 milliliter lens for me was a challenge. So I was spending one hour to, to frame the target and then I had one hour left and then you have, I had all these other technical issues that were happening. I lose focus, I need to do it again. And so, I, so that, that was, there was a lot of frustration before, but then it's, it's the, 
eureka moment when you you finally get it um, but now uh, I use the PC and basically I have a database of all these objects it, and it takes a picture and it looks at it through the database and finds the actual coordinates of my image so when I want to center an image on let's say again Andromeda and on multiple nights I'm always gonna have the same framing so I can really do a longer image uh, with more details uh, because of that so but every single frame so there's yes I automate and I say I'm gonna go play guitar but there's always at least one hour where I just sit and look at the screen and just wait at the image and see them coming in it's always just fascinating to, to see them come in just une place dans ta mémoire Juste un peu d'encre dans ton journal Je me veux dans ta tête Mon amour m'était déjà ailleurs Ouais Je veux juste une goutte dans ta bouteille Juste un doute dans ton pourquoi Ou dans ton oreille qui te rappelle à moi ouais. à tous les matins on ramène ailleurs ton odeur mon univers si je deviens fou c'est l'heure de solitaire qui vient m'embrasser des confitures des gestes folies je fabule dans un décor maçonnier Tes mots sur le mien Je t'aimais encore Une première fois 